Now we're all looking maybe not for a sure thing, but for a stable thing where our money can work best for us and our future. And with all the demands on our money these days, if you've got some extra cash, what should you do with it? Scott in California. Scott, you're on the money line. Talk to us. Hi, Carmen. Well, I recently inherited uh, $250,000, and I've maxed out my Roth IRA and invested the rest in mutual funds. I've been watching your show for a long time, so I didn't put all my eggs in one basket. Um, I've got it spread out right now in precious metals, energy, small cap, mid cap funds. And uh, I also inherited a duplex, which is paid off. And I'm living on one side and running out the other. Okay. And what I'm thinking about is buying another home so I can rent out the entire duplex or leaving my money in the investment. So what I really need your help with is uh, where do you think I should put my money? Okay, so Scott, a, a, a couple other things here. What about uh, you have no other debts, no debts at all, right? Right. Right, and then do you have anything in cash? Yeah, I have about $3,000 in, in cash. Okay, so about three grand in cash, and, and then the rest is, is parceled out between these funds. Now, you own the duplex, you're in one side, you rent out the other side, so it's a primary residence and an investment at the same time. So, Scott, just making all that stuff clear so we can figure out where your money should go to work for you. Lockwood, what do you think? Well, you know, I think your rainy day fund is nowhere near, Scott, what it needs to be at 3000 I think we all agree here on the desk that you need to build that up a little bit quicker. Now, you do have your money invested in the mutual funds. I don't have a real problem with your asset allocation, except at your age of 33, I would definitely add some bonds to that portfolio. Um, now, let's say you raise this capital for the rainy day fund. The one thing that you're really missing at age 33 is a retirement plan. So I would go, and you're a school teacher, so it's called the 403B. It's just like the 401K. You can put up to 16500 a year in it. I would make sure you get that started because, quite frankly, you're going to wake up one of these days and say, oh, my Lord, I want to retire, and I haven't started my retirement plan. So get that going. But my friend, other Doug over here, wants to talk to you about the real estate. <laughs> Doug Flynn. Well, uh, the question when a client asks me, should I buy a piece of property is, especially like this, if it's an investment real estate property, my question is, you're already a half landlord and you're owner occupied. As soon as you go into another piece of property, it's picking up a part-time job. Now, that may be okay. You may want to fix things that go on and you may want to do this or hire somebody and eat away at your profit margin to do that. But that's the other decision. Keeping your money invested in the funds is going to earn the similar equity return with very little effort on your part. I don't know if you want that other job. If you do, it's something to consider, but you have to sell all those funds probably to put down on there. And I would just really question, are you equipped to do it? If it's a two family, are you, do you want to do this? Uh, and the more houses you have, the more complicated it gets. Yeah, Scott, do you? Um, not really. <laughs> there you go. Well, there you go. Because, I mean, you could hire a management company to do mm -hmm. this, but it is a cost to you, so it's going it's to really eat some of the profits there. And to um, Doug, your point, Lockwood, point uh, about the, where your funds are at right now, Scott, you really want to maximize all those tax-friendly options that you have because you may think that having these investments, these mutual funds out there, that is your retirement plan, mm -hmm. but really you're going to pay so many taxes, so much capital gains on those funds that you have. Protect some of that and let it grow tax-free utilizing all those tools but I gotta go my vote first vote in terms of where your money should go here Scott is the piggy bank I need you to have more in savings Scott even if it's just to have okay. a cash there to help you to, to for bills for the duplex anything that comes up so you don't have to use a plastic in any way shape or form at any point in time or cash out any more of those stocks what do you think okay all right. I think that's a great idea. Thanks. All right, Scott, you're in good shape. Thank you so much. Let's head to the money line. We've got Kathy in Alabama. Kathy, talk to us. <laughs> well, thanks for taking my call. I'm um, just very new to the investment and in savings. I used to let my husband take care of all of that. And now I need to make some serious decisions about uh, using a recent life insurance payment to pay down my mortgage or and should I possibly use a CD that I have to completely pay it off or should I take part of that money and invest it? I just need to know what to do with my money. Okay, Kathy, so let, let's talk a little bit about what you've got here. So how much do you have in terms of um, the, the payment? What's the lump sum? Oh, the, it was a $50,000 life insurance payment. Okay, so $50,000. Now, your mortgage right now is $100,000, correct? Yes. But but it, your home is worth over two hundred. Yes, about two seventy. dollars Okay, and, and I think, gentlemen, that we saw a little more background on Kathy, that, mm -hmm. that she still needs more in terms of retirement. You're, you're 48, Kathy, so we want to protect you. You're on your own now, so how can we do mm -hmm. that? 
Well, first, Kathy, uh, sorry for your loss. Um, are you working right now? Yes. You are, and you're not involved in an employer-sponsored plan in any shape? Or we do have a retirement, but it's a fixed amount that they take out, and I cannot increase it. I can't change any of that. Okay, so you might want to contribute to a Roth IRA. Uh, you're not 50 yet, so you're 48. I think you put up to 5,000 a year. Definitely get going on that. That'll provide you some real mileage on tax-free growth when you get to the retirement date. And then the other thing is you have some liquid assets that I would like to see. You have, I think, a CD right. and some cash. I would like to see those liquid assets maybe be used in more of a balanced asset allocation that you don't have so much loaded because we still consider CDs as cash. Um, and really diversify those assets along with building up this retirement plan for yourself. Yeah, because Kathy, I see you've got you know you've got quite a bit of savings. You have forty six thousand in savings. You have the CD, which is fifty thousand. That's a tremendous amount of cash, especially compared to your to your income at this point. It's more than your income, and you have this fifty coming in. But I don't see enough here built in for retirement. So to your question, Doug Flynn, in terms of her question about prepaying that mortgage. Well, look, Kathy, the good news is you actually have the house paid off because. You do the math. If you have $100,000 in savings and investments and you owe $100,000, you just haven't affected the transaction of paying it off. Good point. But you have it paid off. And so the trick is to get that money invested comfortably for yourself if you're new to this, learn how to do that. As long as you can earn more with that money than you're paying after taxes because you can afford this, uh, our advice would probably be not to pay that off. But by having the money invested, you reserve the right to make that transaction at any point in the future uh, when it no longer makes sense, you're not earning as much as you're paying. But you have a really low rate, you have good income, don't be so quick to pay it off because once you put that money in there, it's very hard to get it back out right yeah, now. Yeah, I mean, that's what I'm really afraid of, Kathy, because if you basically, you, you load up the house, you're, you have too much house here and you've got tons mm -hmm. of cash here, there's nothing at the top of this pyramid that's protecting you down the road in retirement, especially for taxes. So, Kathy, here's our judgment call for you. Where should you put your money in retirement? And that chair, the beach chair, by the way, <laughs> that's all about retirement, Kathy, and that's where we want to see you safely down the road. So that's where your money should go. Thank you so much for joining us.